Hi, I'm Sean Carlock. Welcome to Send It 14. In the next 10 Send It episodes, we're going to build a complete rifle. We're going to start off with component selection. We're going to go through the build process and hold your hand along the way. Now, this isn't an advertisement about, hey, come buy Defensive Edge rifles. This is a lot more about, hey, these are things you can, should consider when you're having a custom rifle built, regardless of whether we do it or someone else does it. These are just things we found to be helpful and things for you to think about. We'll also kind of help you map out how you want your build to go. It'll make a better experience for you in the end. So our first step is action selection and what are we going to do to it or what do we need to do to it to bring it up to speed. So you can get a custom action and if you had to buy an action and modify a factory-styled action like Remington 700, you start getting into a situation where, yeah, I can do this stuff and I can make a really great action out of it, but by the time I do all those things, I'm getting close to the cost of a custom. It's not going to equal it, but it's going to get up there pretty close to it. Now, if you already have an action lying around, that was just a donor action you picked up for pretty cheap, or you have a gun lying around that you aren't using, the barrel's burned out of it, you need to do something with it anyway, then that's a pretty easy, easy pitch there to not buying a custom action. And we go both ways. We build custom actions, and we modify existing factory actions in our builds all the time. And it's... I can't really say that one is necessarily better than the other in terms of accuracy. A custom action will give you features and baseline components built into it that you cannot get into a factory action, but that depends on exactly what you're going to build. For this build, we selected a Remington action because there are so many people out there with a Remington action that are thinking about, hey, what do I want to do with this? What should I do to it to make it into a long-range rifle? So we chose to go there. You can always get a custom action and build a gun completely from scratch, and I think that everybody realizes that. So we'll go through how to build from a factory action here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to modify the bolt, we're probably going to flute the bolt body just because I like fluted bolt bodies to match a fluted barrel. If we're going to put on a slick barrel, I would leave the bolt alone. I kind of like them to match. We're going to come in here and square up the action face. We're going to square and true and blueprint the entire action. We're not going to get into how to do that because this is not a how-to video, but we're going to do it. We'll show you the results of that when it's done and what it looks like, and then we'll go on to other modifications of the action in further episodes. Okay, now that we have our M16 extractor installed and the bolt face cleared up and re-ringed so that there's not an old factory extractor groove left in there, we're pretty much ready to go. We really like the M16 extractor. It pivots on a pin, it's just kind of a teeter-totter affair, and snaps directly over the case, and it's just a good solid extractor. I mean, it was designed for full auto use. The chances of you ever breaking one in a bolt-action rifle are almost non-existent. This is a, probably one of the most worthwhile upgrades to the 700 action that we can think of. Okay, now we've got our action squared and trued. We've come in here and we've squared up the face. 
we've squared up the bolt lug surfaces, and we've trued up the threads. All of the mating surfaces of the action we have squared and trued now. It's ready for us to start to install a barrel. Spotter up. Spotter's up. Come on it. Send it. That buck has been terminated. Nice shot, Sean. Uh, just a few yards shy of 700. Nice job. That is awesome. Great <laughs> footage. <laughs>